Alrighty. So here we go. We've got uh, the six major covenants of, of, of God. We have Adam, which we talked about already. Now, one thing it was asked was, what's the whole the whole deal? Basically, God says, I'm going to give you dominion. And there's only one rule. Don't touch. Okay? So don't touch. So he touched the, uh, they, they went and got the, the tree, ate from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and now all of a sudden they lost all their promise. So their promise was, you'll have dominion, you'll have life abundant, so on and so forth, and they lost life abundant. They lost their dominion, okay? <laughs> because they touched. So Now, the other parts of it was be fruitful, multiply, subdue the earth, and have dominion over it. So all that was part of that as well, okay? Um, make sense? So that's Adam. Um, and that pretty much sets the stage for everything. All right, it sets the stage. Also, if you disobey, then you'll die. Yeah. That's another part of it. Dying, death was part of the, the deal. Okay, if you if you touch that, then you die. Okay, so death. The scripture says death reigned through Adam. All right, and every man after Adam had to go through death because. Of this one violation. <clears throat> it set up all men to basically die. Alright? We erase this. Y'all got it? Death brain thread. That's in Romans. Alright, so now we're gonna talk about Noah. So I'm gonna list it out real quick. We have Adam, we have Noah, we have Abraham, we have that's one, two, three. We have Moses, we have David, and then we have Messiah. That's your list of covenants. As you study the scriptures, you'll see a covenant with Adam, then Noah, then Abraham, then Moses, then David, then, then the Messiah. Okay? And everything leads up to that last one. Okay? It's a better and far superior covenant. All these other ones are inferior. If you'll know this, that's important. None of the previous ones are scrapped though they all build on top of one another okay just because we have the messiah doesn't mean that the abraham covenant is removed that's that's mentioned in chapter in romans let's go to romans uh chapter four <coughs> romans chapter four it says right here no not romans galatians Galatians says in chapter 3, verse 15, to give a human example, brothers, even when the man made covenant, no one annuls it or adds to it once it's been ratified. Now the promises were made to Abraham and to his offspring. It does not say, and to offsprings, uh, referring to many, but referring to one, and to your offspring, who is Christ. This is what I mean. The law, which came 430 years afterward, does not annul the covenant previously ratified by God, so as to make the promise void. For if the inheritance comes by the law, it no longer comes by promise, but God gave it to Abraham by a promise. So, he's talking about how this one doesn't nullify this one. Okay, well, this one doesn't nullify any of those either. This one only builds on top of it. Okay, this is important to know. This is important to know because we're going to answer the question about Job. Um, why, did these things, why did all the things happen in Job? Why did these things happen to Job? And how come, you know, according to this messianic uh, covenant we, we have with him, you know, why would God send things on him you know, if in Christ, he doesn't send anything. Well, Job wasn't in Christ, number one. The covenant that we have with the Messiah, because of Jesus, doesn't apply to Job. Okay? It doesn't apply on several levels. We're going to go through that, okay? Check this out. It semi doesn't apply. There's there's, there's um, something i got to show you there. It's pretty cool. All right? All right, so where are we at? We are in Noah. So Genesis chapter 9, first of all, Abraham had what we call a conditional covenant. There were two classifications of covenants. One is a conditional covenant. Two, no conditions. Or maybe even less conditions. Okay? Conditions. Everything has a condition. It's just what are the conditions. 
Obey me. If you disobey me, you lose it. Noah. Noah had a different covenant. Let's go check this out. Genesis chapter 9, verse 8. Then God said to Noah and to his sons with him, Behold, I establish my covenant with you and your offspring after you and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the livestock, and every beast of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark it is for every beast of the earth. I have established my covenant with you that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of the flood and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is the sign of the covenant that I made between me and you and every living creature that is with you. For all future generations, I have set my bow in the cloud, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant with it uh, that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the water shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it. And remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said, no, this is the sign of the covenant I've established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. So he said it like four times. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do this. Because now I, we described something pretty cool last time. Um, first of all, the name, if we're going to go through here, check this out. You have Adam. Okay. And then after Adam, you have Seth. And then after Seth. It goes through a couple names um, to Jared, and then Enoch, Methuselah. After Methuselah comes Lamech. Lamech comes Noah. All right? <clears throat> now, Enoch, it says in the scripture that he was the seventh generation. While we were studying earlier about the flood... I'm going to show you something pretty neat. Genealogies are so important. You need to study them. If you get your time to do it. 1656. <laughs> there was 1656 years from Adam to the flood. Okay? 1,600 years. 600 of those years was Noah's life before the flood. So Noah was born 1,056 years after Adam was born. And Adam lived 930 years of that. So there's about 80 year difference between the death of Adam and the birth of Noah. That's pretty cool. 70, 70 plus 56, it's actually not, not, I messed that up. 70 plus 56 is 126, 126 years, okay, 106, 26 years, hmm, 126 years between the death of Adam and the birth of Noah. Um, it's crazy stuff, Okay. Adam lived till, like, no, Lamech was like 56 years old. Lamech was Noah's dad. He was 56 year old, years old when Adam died. Noah never met Adam. But all these other guys did meet Adam. Okay? It's kind of weird. Huh? Yeah. All these other guys, they knew Adam. So, seven, eight, nine, nine generations. Adam saw nine generations of his son, 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 sons. Down to nine generations. <clears throat> Enoch... Named his son Methuselah. Remember this conditional covenant, no conditions. I'm going to show you something about the time of Noah. Methuselah, Enoch only lived three, 365 years. Mm -hmm. He he was he was no more. It says he was taken. Oh, he didn't die. He was just taken. His son was Methuselah. Methuselah has to do with the javelin, the word has to do with javelin, okay? And it, it, it refers to when he dies, it will happen, okay? When he dies, it will happen. Lamech was 777 years old when he died, five years before the flood. This is really cool. Three sevens. Lamech was the father of Noah. Scripture says that by him, the earth would be healed. Mm. Mm. Six, the word, the number six 
has to do with man. He was 600 years old when the flood came and destroyed all men. <laughs> Some really cool numbers here. 777. The father. He prophesied. Let's look at this. Lamech had lived 182 years old when he fathered a son and called his name Noah, saying, Out of the ground that the, that the Lord has cursed, this one shall bring us relief from our work and from the painful toil of our hands. So Noah, Lamech was a prophet. He prophesied about Noah coming and relieving the earth of the sin. Cool stuff. <laughs> it's awesome. All right, so Noah comes. The flood happens. All right, nobody else dies in the flood. They all, this is the line of righteousness. Everybody else was sinful. This is the line of righteousness. Not one of these people die in the flood, except Methuselah was 969 years old, and he died, if you do the math, he dies the same exact same year as the flood. On day, on year 1656. Okay? That's so cool. He dies the same year as the flood. And I used to think, man, did he die in the flood? Because long life was a sign of righteousness. So, I didn't make sense to me that the oldest man to ever live died in the flood. But we didn't know he died the same year as the flood. If you study his name, it says when he dies, it will happen. And it has to do with the javelin, like mm. judgment. Check this mm. out. Or when he dies, it will be sent. But it was like a javelin, like an arrow. That's good. It's good stuff. Extra biblical books will say that Methuselah and Noah preached the gospel, or preached repentance for 120 years. He was... That's his grandpa. The oldest man ever lived. This is called mercy. If this what his name means when he dies, will happen? The oldest man to ever live. God said when he dies, will it happen? Enoch saw something. Enoch walked so righteous with God because of his fear of the Lord. He was just taken after 365 mm -hmm. years. He saw something. And then prophetically named his son. Lamech prophetically named his son. Hey, there's going to be relief. Through this one. That's yeah, powerful. <laughs> end times. The flood was end times for these people. Enoch saw this end time. Mm. Enoch saw this end time. And he named his son a prophetic name. He died that year. The flood happened. Okay? Check this out. <clears throat> this is the sign of the covenant that I made between them. He made the bow. He made the bow. Javelin. It's like an arrow. Check this out. So after he flooded the earth, he made a promise and made a bow in the sky. Mm. And if you if you really think about it, it was a prophetic sign. I'll never destroy the whole world again. Yeah. That's awesome. With a bow pointing toward heaven, hmm. you're not going to have to pay for this anymore. The whole world will be judged one more time. Actually, two more times. There were several judgments, okay? But this was the first one for the whole world. The scripture says that Jesus took the sin of the whole world upon himself. Yeah, the wrath of God was poured out onto Jesus. The bow was a prophetic sign of the next time I send something, it's going to be my son, and I will send judgment on him. Isn't that powerful stuff or what? Yes, he is. <laughs> this bow. This powerful Good. stuff. Okay? Jesus takes the punishment for us. Roughly. <laughs> <laughs> I 
2,500 years later. All right. All right. Powerful stuff. There's a promise. These covenants keep building on top of one another. I erased them, so yeah. All right, check this out. So he made this covenant, and it was an unconditional covenant. Why? Because it has to do with Jesus. Amen. The flood is actually an earth baptism. Mm. Mm. All the sins were washed away. That's why good. Noah. Man, that's good stuff. I'm telling you. Noah was prophetic. His whole life was prophetic of this relief that would come upon the earth. <laughs> Spiritual baptism, earthly baptism. Powerful stuff. Powerful stuff. Was it a whole year that they were living? Well, if you study um, how long they were on the boat, it was over 10 months. So they understood months. How we know they understood months? Genesis chapter 1. That the stars would govern the seasons. The moon would govern the months. The sun would govern the year. Seed, time, and harvest. If seven days has lasted from the beginning till now, we recognize a week is seven days. I think they had a pretty good grasp of what a year was. Seed time, harvest. Seed time, harvest. Seed time, harvest. The stars governed the years. The moon governed the months and the sun governed, actually not the year, the day. Enoch living to be 365 days. Isn't that crazy? Enoch actually, there's a book, we don't get into it because we're not teaching on the book of Enoch, but the book of Enoch actually talks about how Enoch saw the year. He has a calendar. Yeah. That's pretty wild, huh? He actually created his own calendar, which was a solar calendar. Well, it's not really a solar calendar. It's a God, if it's from God, it's a God-inspired calendar. Yeah, it's pretty wild. He already, in fact, in the Enoch calendar, they already, they already, they're more perfect than the Roman calendar. It's more perfect than the Roman calendar. It already figures in the extra week you have to add in there. He goes 360 days. His months were 30. I'm not trying to get into this in the name of Jesus. I'm not going to do this. 30 days was each month. <laughs> Sorry, I asked. It's all right. You got me on starting now. 30 days each month, according to Enoch calendar, which leave, which messes things up a bit by almost a week, roughly five to six days. It's pretty cool. Anyway. We're not going to get into it too much. But my point is, yeah, they had a, they had an understanding of a year. So when they said he lived 930 years, they meant it. <laughs> and it was after the flood that their lifespan drastically changed. Mm -hmm. Drastically. They were not living over 200 and something years after that point. After the flood, Noah lived another 900, I think he lived 956 years old. He was the second oldest man to, to live. If I have my numbers correct. And um, it's, it's awesome stuff. Also, Genesis chapter 6 talks about the Nephilim. These are your giants and stuff. All right? And we're not going to get into that. We're going to stop now. We're going to stop talking about this because I don't want to get into the book of Enoch. Books of Enoch not in our canonical scriptures. So I'm going to stay away from that. Um, we're going to keep pressing forward with what, we, what, we, what all Christians agree, pretty much for the most part, is our canonical scriptures. Can, canon means uh, list. Canon means list. And it has to do, I misspelled that. Uh, canon means list, and what it means is this is what everybody agreed was God-inspired. So we put it together, okay? So we trust the Holy Spirit in each person, and, you know, Right? That's why we do it. <clears throat> All right. Jesus is awesome. Don't ask me my personal opinion, but <laughs> we'll just keep going with what we know to be true. All right.
<laughs> Subtle. <laughs> All right, so that's Noah's covenant. That's a simple one. There's so much power in it, okay? So much power in it. It is a prophetic covenant, all right? All right, so now we're going to get into Abraham. Abrahamic covenant. All peoples, again, were worshiping idols. You're talking about within a, I mean, super short time. Um, well, I say super short time. Super short time relevant to how old these guys were living back then. Um, I think that it said, I think that it's like he's in his 50s or 60s. Abraham was like 50 or 60 years old when Noah died. So it's very possible they met and even learned from him. That uh, Abraham learned from Noah about the one true God. And everyone around them was worshiping idols according to Jewish tradition. It's not in your Bible, but Jewish tradition says that they were all that um, his father was an idol maker and that he left home um, partly because he was following the one true God. Okay? So they were already abandoning God so quickly. Okay? Mm. Um, now the Lord said to Abraham, go from your country. This is Genesis chapter 12. Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you and him who dishonors you I will curse. And in you all the families of the earth will be blessed. All right. So this is partly conditional. The only thing that he had to do was trust God and obey. Okay? He had to leave his home. That was part of, the, part of getting this promise. He had to leave home and follow God. And he trusted him. His faith, the scripture says, his faith was considered righteousness. Not his obedience. Okay? His faith was considered righteousness. His faith led to obedience. Okay? Abraham has a unique covenant. He's a lot like us. The scripture says that we are the children of our father, Abraham, because he was the father of our faith. All nations shall be blessed through you. Again, talking about the seed. The offspring. Jesus. Good stuff. All nations you shall all be blessed. So there's three parts of his covenant. Number one, he says, I will make you a, a great nation. Number one, I'll, I'll make you a great nation. Number two, I'm going to give you a land. A promised land. I'm taking you to a, a new place. A land, promised land. Number three, all peoples will be blessed. You'll be a blessing to all nations. Blessing to all nations. And then part of the protection of him was, not necessarily a protection, but more of a warning to all other peoples, he who blesses you will be blessed, and he who curses you will be cursed. So he didn't have any kind of protection here. All right? There's no, there's no covenants of protection, you see? No covenants of protection for Abraham. Mainly just a promise of great blessing for his whole family. That his family would be a blessing to all nations. You see? So this was the covenant. I'll make you a blessing to all nations. If someone blesses you, Abraham, they'll be blessed. If they curse you, they will be cursed. So this was part of the protection for Abraham. Okay? Um, Noah didn't have any of that. The only protection that Noah had was no more. The covenant that God made with Noah was, we're not going to flood the whole earth again. So it was earth protection. You see, we're talking about what is in your covenant. What's in your line of agreement with God? You see? All right, so Abraham has that covenant. Check this out. Deuteronomy chapter 20. No, we're not doing that. That was uh, Abraham. Okay, so that's Abraham. You see that the, the covenants build on top of each other. Stop. Okay, now we're going to go to Moses. <laughs> now, keep this in mind. There's no protection against sickness in Abraham's covenant. It's limited. Let's, let's just say, put, let's put it this way. Limited protection. Limited protection. Same thing with Noah. It's mainly just world destruction is, you know, uh, a promise that a judging of the world all at once won't happen again. Okay? It almost becomes an individual basis. You know what I mean? Crazy. Abraham, Adam, it was dominion that was promised. And it was taken. Okay? That dominion was taken. 
Um, all right, does it make sense? Okay, then you have Moses. Now, this one is crazy. It is a conditional covenant by far. It is extremely conditional. Now, this one is like, probably answer the question now. Why did God do this? You know? See, the thing is, the people were so far off already in their sin. He was trying to teach them, this is what it would take for you to be able to be with me. You've already forsaken me so far. If you will obey, all these blessings will come over me. If you disobey, all these curses will overtake you. Okay? Again, we're talking about law. We're talking about covenant. So Exodus chapter 19, verse 5 through... Uh, it's actually completely through uh, Exodus 19 through 24. Like the whole law is written there, okay? But we're going to look at Exodus 19, verse 5 through 6. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, then you shall be a special treasure to me above all people. For all the earth is mine. And if you shall be to me a kingdom of priests, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation, these are the words which you shall speak to the children of Israel. Okay, so if you go to Deuteronomy chapter 28, we're not going to read through the whole thing. You just need to know that half of it, actually, about, about uh, one fifth of it is good and four fifths of it's bad. <laughs> okay? But let me just describe to you some of the stuff here. Deuteronomy chapter 28. So he makes a covenant with his people. It says, if you obey my commandments, which is the law, 613 laws and 10 commandments. Ridiculous, right? 613 laws. <laughs> 613 laws. And 10 commandments. A lot. A lot. Basically, and remember, law didn't create sin. Sin was already created. Law just showed a light on what they were doing wrong already. Hey, this is what you've been doing wrong. Hey, you're not going to take over this land because of your righteousness. I'm going to give you this land because of their wickedness. Mm. Basically, listen, I'm passing judgment on the peoples of this land in Canaan. I'm giving you the land. I already prophesied that a long time ago. Hey, I'm going to give you this land. Why? Because the people that were in the land were had forsaken God. And by the way, the, 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 the Israelites were not the only people that God had given land to. When the people were going through the land, he'd say, hey, don't go through there. I gave that land to Esau, to the Edomites. It belongs to them. So God was the distributor of land. He gave people groups land. It's crazy. Makes sense, right? God gives dominion over the earth. Mm -hmm. It's good stuff. All right, so 613 laws, 10 commandments. <clears throat> <laughs> you see the blessings and cursing. So let's go. All these blessings right here. And if you faithfully obey, this is Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 1. If you faithfully obey the voice of the Lord your God, being careful to do all his commandments that I command you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations of the earth, and all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Blessed shall be you. In and he goes through all these blessings, basically saying, I'm not going to send sickness on you. I'm going to protect you. So there... So, in Moses, this is amazing. This is the first time that you see protection really said, hey, I'm going to spell out for you. These are all the blessings, boom, 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 that will overtake you if you obey me. So, and that's what they're wanting, you know? But, uh, look, look, they wanted a spell out. So he gave them a spell out of all the things that they would inherit if they would obey. And if they didn't obey, all these other things would overtake them. Mm. Now, God is not a liar. So when they disobeyed God, all the curses overtook them. Every single curse listed in Deuteronomy chapter 28. Was a pro was a prophecy of a sort. And <clears throat> they were fulfilled throughout the scriptures. A foreign land will come take you and take you in exile. That's all in Deuteronomy 20, chapter 28. They'll take you places you don't want to go. I'll be, you'll, you're going to be separated from your families. You're going to run to Egypt, which I told you you'd never do again, but you're going to run to Egypt anyway, like I told you not to, and they're not going to even give you sanctuary. Everywhere you go, everything you do will be cursed. Yes, so because they disobey the Lord, they operated in a curse. See? Now, this is powerful stuff. Um... 
Roman, uh, the law put us in a place where there was no hope. It's so powerful. Why did God give these, these laws? Then? If, he, if he knew we couldn't keep them, why did he give them to us? <laughs> it's a setup, buddy. He knew we couldn't do it. Why did he make us? Why did he put this on there? It's a setup. God's in perfect wisdom. He understands. He understands that the enemy, the accuser of the brethren, will use this law against the people of God. So he creates a way. The way out. <laughs> That's awesome. All right, check this out. Romans chapter. Uh, well, I put on here. Why? Why would God do that? Because Christ would fulfill the righteous requirement of the law, so that in Him we would be set free. Check this out. Romans eight three through four. Since God made a law, right? If He could uphold this law in such a wonderful way, that would exempt us from the consequence of this law. It would be perfect wisdom. Check this out. Romans 8, 3 through 4. For God has done what the law weakened by the flesh could not do. By sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh and for sin, he condemned sin in the flesh in order that the righteous requirement of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. So in Jesus Christ, he pays the penalty for all that the law required of you now. Oh, do not in chapter 28. All that stuff, God took care of it in Jesus. It's so cool. So all the curses that belong to you because we deserve it. Okay? Now Jesus takes it. All right? So why did God send all this stuff in the Old Testament? Because they disobeyed his law. You see? Like you can't... Everything that they did, everything that was sent by God... You have to keep in mind, too, that... The devil's the one that does all this work. You know what I mean? He was the destroyer. God's not the destroyer. Satan's the destroyer. What the, what the, what the devil does is he takes opportunity. Mm. He takes the opportunity. Isaiah 54 says, I made the ravager to destroy. I made the weapon for its purpose. What's the purpose? Judgment. Righteousness. The two wills of God. Justice and mercy. How can you have mercy without justice? So he created a law that put us in a spot there was no way out so that only he could bring us out of it. He brought us to a place where we would be deprived. Where we'd have to, where we'd have to trust in him. Mm. Why did you give that to me, God? Because I know that you couldn't do it anyway. You were already in sin. The law didn't make sin. I didn't create sin with the law. See, check this out. We were already in sin. We were already condemned. All he did was create a law that made it exceedingly more sinful. It was already sinful. Before the law, everybody was dying anyway. See, the law was actually mercy. The fact that he gave a law, it's so awesome. He gave the law so that we would be even it would be we would held, be held accountable to even a higher standard so that he could in his wisdom create a way to fulfill the law <laughs> cuz without a law Jesus couldn't die for you yeah you know without this law Jesus couldn't have fulfilled the curse for you without these covenants someone else greater couldn't have come through and said I'm going to pay the penalty for all this. Bam, 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 bam. Without there being an official penalty, he wouldn't have been able to come in. It's so amazing. And there's such wisdom here. It's deeper. It's even deeper. I can't even explain it all. Check this out. Romans chapter 7, verse 1 through 6. Or do you not know, brothers, for I am speaking to those who know the law, that the law is binding on a person only as long as he lives. For a married woman is bound by her husband. I read this earlier to you. By her husband while he lives. But if her husband dies, she is released from the law of marriage. Accordingly, she will be called an adulteress if she lives with another man while her husband is alive. But if her husband dies, she is free from that law. 
And if she marries another man, then she is not an adulteress. Likewise, my brothers, you also have died to the law through the body of Christ, so that you may belong to another, to him who has been raised from the dead, in order that we may bear fruit for God. For while we were living in the flesh, our sinful passions aroused by the law. We're at work in our members to bear fruit for, uh, for death. But now we are released from the law, having died to that which held us captive. It was a setup. God created the law so we would all be held accountable. So now we're held accountable. Mm. This is the reason why you're dying. I'm going to come pay. Boom. Let's get stuck. It was God's wisdom. So that we serve in the new way of the spirit, not in the old way of the written code. It's <coughs> good stuff. Genesis chapter 3. I mean, Galatians chapter 3. Let's go over there. For some reason, I don't have it written down here, but it needs to be here. Galatians chapter 3. Why then the law? It was added because of transgression, until the offspring should come to whom the promise had been made. And it was put in place through angels by an intermediary. Now an intermediary implies more than one, but God is one. Is the law then contrary to the promise of God? Certainly not. For if a law, if a law had been given that would give life, then righteousness would, not, would indeed be by the law. But the scripture imprisoned everything under sin, so that the promise by faith in Jesus Christ might be given to those who believe. Galatians 3.13, watch this. Now it is evident that no one is justified before God by the law, for the righteous shall live by faith. But the law is not of faith, rather the one who does them shall live by them. Verse 13, Galatians 3.13, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who is hanged on a tree, so that in Christ Jesus the blessing of Abraham might come to the Gentiles, so that we might receive the promised spirit through faith. He became a curse. Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, I'm sorry. <clears throat> and he died for all, verse uh, 15. And he died for all that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. From now on, therefore, we regard no one according to the flesh. Even though we once regarded Christ according to the flesh, we regard him thus no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. He could not reconcile us without a law. What the law did it was it made it legal for Jesus to come pay the penalty for our sin. Without a law, Jesus would have nothing to pay for. Mm. It's good stuff. All this is from God, right? Who gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is in Christ. God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors of Christ. Why? God making his appeal to us. Watch this, watch this. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. Verse 21. For our sake, he made him to be sin, who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. It's powerful stuff. All right, so that's Moses. So Moses had a covenant, a conditional covenant. Okay? Go to David. And the promise was conditional also for David. All right, so everybody understand. That in the law of Moses, it was conditional, extremely conditional, and this is the one that really messed us up. It really put us in a place of bondage. That covenant made it put us in a place of bondage because we could not keep this. Hey guys, this is James Whetstone here again. Be sure to click that like button and that subscribe button. Share us to all of your friends. Reach the gospel. Be a good witness. Come on, guys. Christianity. Also, follow us on Twitter at Daily Bomb. That's B-A-L-M. Stands for Bold as Line Ministries, if you haven't guessed. Or Soothing Ointment, whichever you prefer. There is a website that you need to check out. If you haven't become part of this community already, you need to. It's B-A-L-M-Z-S dot com.
www.ministrymarkgrimes.com. That is our website. Go to it. Check out all of our teachings, all of our ministry outlets. If you liked this video, if you liked what you heard, then consider, I'm, I'm just saying consider, becoming a monthly sponsor or giving a one-time donation. Every little bit helps. We cannot run this without our supporters, so thank you so much, guys, for, for your donations and your support to this. Most of our ministry contacts that we get, especially overseas for our missions department, come from them finding us via the media. So donating to media actually helps our missions. Also, donating to missions helps our missions. That's, I mean, that's, like us on Facebook. Follow us on Facebook. If you have not yet, we have two pages. We got the Daily Ball and we got the Bold as Align Ministries page. So continue to support. Thank you so much. Have a great week. Have a blessed day. See you next Monday.